Hello, and welcome to ASQ Quality Management Division's video learning series. This is our presentation of an introduction to quality function deployment focusing on the House of Quality tool. This learning module will take you through the thinking behind the House of Quality. Then we'll back up a bit to show what quality function deployment is why you might want to use quality function deployment, and when QFD, for short, can be a useful tool. Finally, we'll show you how you can build the house of quality using the Quality Management Division's QFD companion tool. We will show you how to obtain the tool at the end. The house of quality helps answer the question of how to best achieve what our customers want, what design features are important to our customers, and which are of lesser importance so we can prioritize. How does our design measure up to the competition? How, how can we be better than our competition in the customer's eyes? And finally, how are you going to ensure that the customer desires are met? What things do we need to build into our processes? To begin, you must know what your customer wants and needs are. QFD helps you do this effectively. Quality function deployment is typically used through the design and development phase of a product lifecycle. However, it could be applied anywhere. There are you know, customer supplier relationships, whether they are internal or external. QFD can also be useful even if your product is a service. As you sustain your build or and or service delivery process, an updated house of quality tool continues to be a resource for risk prevention and opportunity recognition. There are several reasons why you would want to use QFD. The first reason is to know current and future customer needs. Next, to be sure that the competitive situation is thoroughly understood and considered during design. Use it to develop a better defined value proposition with your customer. Use it also to balance multiple product features against each other and with customer needs. It will promote collaboration throughout design and development. You will better focus attention in developing and evaluating design alternatives. Last of all, it helps you link critical to quality characteristics, process requirements, and quality controls with customer needs. Now, you've all seen situations like this. Let's watch this animation and see if you recognize any of these situations in your workplace. QFD is typically used for major changes, like when going from version 1.0 to 2.0, for instance. Other iterative uh, development processes, like Agile, would be better if going from version 1.0 to, say, 1.1. That is, when only a minor change in the version is desired. Quality function deployment starts with a good understanding of the market the product will be competing in, current and future customers, competitors and market trends, new technologies. Passively, you want to look at the current requirements for this product or similar. Request for proposals or quotations, existing contracts or customer specifications. More actively, include customer meetings or interviews 
user group meetings, surveys, observations, suggestions, feedback from the field, industry trade shows, third party market analysis. Now when all is said and done, you want to make a list of user needs and wants. Put simply, what does your customer want? You can learn more about quality function deployment from ASQ sources. Use a QR code on your smart device to link to these sources. We have full references provided at the end of this talk. QFD is a large topic, so we will focus on one tool, the House of Quality. The Quality Management Division has developed a companion QFD tool you may use to help build the House of Quality. A link to the tool will be provided at the end. The next few slides take you step by step and walk you through the House of Quality process. The first thing you want to do is to list your customer needs from your market analysis. Use short affirmative entries to describe each requirement. You could put links to longer descriptions elsewhere. Secondly, you also want to rank the requirements from the customer's viewpoint on a scale of one to five. This would also come from your market analysis. Several requirements may be rated the same, but don't give everything a five. That would defeat the purpose of doing the analysis. The tool then fills in the relative weight for you and the max relationship comes from relationships we will cover next. Remember, you will need a good cross-functional team to do this well. Once you have the customer needs listed and ranked, you move on to list in columns the product or service features needed to satisfy those requirements. As in the customer requirements listed at the right, just a brief description is all that is needed here. Also, the tool helps you indicate the direction of improvement on each feature to show which way is better or if the feature has a specific target condition. Once you have the customer requirements and functional requirements listed, now is the time to use your team to rate any relationships between the rows and columns. A strong relationship between customer requirements and product or service functional requirements is valued as a nine. It's shown as a solid circle on the chart. A moderate relationship would get a three, a half circle. And a weak relationship would get a one, an empty circle. And of course, some have no relationship and those are left blank. Now this is where the max relationship comes from. The highest score across the row for each feature it is possible for all to score a nine. Just remember to use the full range of values. Some relationships are going to be stronger than others. Also, the max relationship at the bottom is also filled in automatically. More on that later. Now it's time to focus on the roof of the house. This is where potential positive and negative correlations between functional requirements are defined. But the example shown here, a thick jacket may provide toughness a thin jacket would allow flexibility and low weight. Well, this means there's a strong negative correlation between column five and column seven. In another example, the right tubing material may allow thinner tubing, so there's a positive correlation there. You can see how functional requirements can be used to enhance each other and how this helps make decisions about trade-offs. Moving to the bottom of the matrix, the test methods and target specifications area helps you identify to what extent functional requirements are being met. These define the critical to quality design requirements that are needed to verify and validate designs. The tool we have built automatically calculates the technical importance rating and the relative weights using relationships and customer rankings entered above. The relative weights for functional requirement columns are color coded with green being the highest weight and red being the lowest weight. Your resources may now be deployed intelligently. On the right hand side is the competitive analysis. The first column is for your product or service. Here we see four competitors compared to yours. This area allows you to see how well your product or service holds up to customer perceptions compared to your competition. This comes from your market analysis of yourself against your competitors. See QFD. Sometimes a technical comparison of your competitors against your products is easier to achieve than a market analysis of how customers view your competitors. 
In this case, you can use sample products to determine how well your product holds up against your competitors' products at the bottom of the matrix. Once the house of quality is done, it's more than just a pretty picture. The house of quality carries a lot of weight for a small document. It contains a lot of useful information for the product design and development process, and it can be shared across all team members. It ties QFD data together. It's useful in internal discussions and evaluations of trade-offs, and it may be used to develop better marketing materials. So now you know a little bit more about QFD and the house of quality. Will it help you understand current and future customer needs? Convey the competitive situation to your stakeholders? Develop a better defined product strategy and value proposition for your customers? Explain the balance between product features and customer needs to be shared with your internal people and processes. Promote collaboration and teamwork throughout the design and development process. Provide adequate attention to developing and evaluating design alternatives and effectively link critical to quality characteristics, process, feature requirements, and quality controls to customer needs. Well, if so, let's try it. The companion QFD tool can be found on the Quality Management Division community in MyASQ. Also, you can find instructions via the upper QR code here on using the seven management and planning tools in support of QFD and the House of Quality. So these are the major references used for this learning module. Thank you very much for your time and attention. With individual and organizational members around the world, ASQ has a reputation and reach to bring together diverse quality champions who are transforming the world's corporations, organizations, and communities to meet tomorrow's critical challenges. If you're a member of ASQ, you may, you may use my ASQ to seek out more information from other practitioners and experts. If you wish to join the Quality Management Division, contact ASQ's Customer Care.